Good morning and welcome to Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. My name is Morris Rodriguez, Manager of Corporate Communications for Memorial Health Care Student Hospital. Thank you for joining us. Today, I have the privilege of introducing Chase, a 16-year-old who has been through a long and arduous journey that all started a little over three weeks ago. A traumatic spinal cord injury at a lacrosse tournament rendered him paralyzed from the neck down. He was airlifted here to Memorial Regional Hospital. He was assessed and underwent a life-saving surgery. In the course of his journey with us, Chase has celebrated many milestones. He has undergone an aggressive rehabilitation treatment plan that has included physical, occupational, and speech therapy seven days a week for an excess of more than three hours a day. And his team is here, all of his therapists, Um, good morning. I can't think of a more wonderful way. I can't think of a more wonderful way to spend um, the morning than to spend it this way. Uh, in the trauma world, we see a lot of devastating injuries, and there's nothing more rewarding than seeing someone who's recovered nearly completely from something that made us more worried than uh, we could have possibly been. There are very few phone calls that we get in the trauma world that make us more concerned than something about a brain injury or a spinal cord injury. And the phone call that we got uh, was that Chase was being flown over uh, from the west coast of Florida with essentially quadriplegia from a devastating spinal cord injury. And when he arrived to us, it was as bad as it looked in terms of his ability to move his arms or his legs, and it made us immediately concerned that this might be a permanent quadriplegia. And the fact that he was able to move a little bit in terms of his arms and his legs gave us some optimism that he was gonna have a good recovery if everything went well. Uh, but initially, when we see someone with a brain or a spinal cord injury, Medicine has evolved a lot over the last hundred years, but the improvements in brain injury, in neuronal disease, in spinal cord injury have been slow. What is really uh, impressive is when we get a patient like Chase who has what looks like a near fatal or a fatal injury and they make it through that. So when he was flown over to us, we were immediately worried about him having a permanent quadriplegia. But as it turns out, with timely surgery, with outstanding ICU and uh, care in the rehab ward, he did as well as we could have possibly hoped. And it's that sort of picture that makes us come to work every day. 
And I think that there's nothing as concerning to a trauma surgeon or as a parent than when we hear about a really devastating spinal cord injury. And this is the best possible outcome that we could have hoped for. Chase had an injury at the cervical spine level of C3, C4. He required immediate surgery in order to decompress that area, in order to liberate the pressure that was on his spinal cord. And what that allowed him to do was then slowly over a period of weeks, recover his function and walk as you saw him do today. The, um, the story is one that you know, gives us hope for all of our future patients when we encounter uh, this sort of injury. And it's really just a reminder to us that with, with the attention to state-of-the-art care and with help from the big man upstairs, uh, that people can get through these kinds of injuries and return to a normal life. Um, I'll answer some questions in a little bit. I'm going to hand it over um, to Dr. Cruz. I'm Andrew Rosenthal, I'm the Director of Trauma at Memorial Regional. So, good morning. My name is Edwin Cruzeno. I um, uh, uh, had the privilege to work with Chase while he was admitted to our, our pediatric rehab unit. He just came to us about five days from the acute injury, which makes a big difference. The sooner you start the rehabilitation, uh, the better uh, outcomes we tend to see. As Dr. Rosenthal mentioned, uh, early on, it was noticed that he had some movement, some sensation in his arms and legs, which is very encouraging. We uh, had good hopes that he was going to have some good recovery three, six months down the road. So he definitely has excelled all that in just uh, three weeks. Uh, you have noticed what he can do. He's literally going to walk out of here today. Uh, the team has worked very hard, physical therapists, occupational speech therapists, our rehab nurse, the PCAs, social work, child life specialist. So it has been a team work, and definitely the most important part of that team was Chase and his mother. Being there all the time makes a great difference. Um, so <clears throat> as I say, it was a uh, uh, good hope that he will recover. And as uh, I mentioned, what he has done in this short period of time is what we expect to see in three, six months down the road. So there's still room for more recovery. and. Uh, we definitely expect that he will continue with that and return to a, a very functional, normal life down the road. Thank you all for being here. Um, one of the things I want to say is that um, his recovery had to do with all of you. I, I know you guys know I blogged this on Facebook and um, your support pushed him every day. I think it was to prove to you to have something to say the next day. And um, you guys were the biggest part of his recovery, his team. Um, I'm crying because this is the first time that I heard that they thought he could be a quadriplegic. <laughs> And I'm grateful that none of you told us that because um, <laughs> I think it might have made a difference in um, how he moved forward. We never thought for a minute. They just told us that, um, that he's a 16-year-old boy and they had every reason to believe that if he put his mind to it, he could recover. And so that's what we believed. And um, I walked into I didn't realize the seriousness of it because they didn't tell me I was driving. So when I got to the hospital, I was like, where is he? And they brought me in and they told me and I immediately said, okay, God, please give me the strength to deal with our new normal, whatever that might be. And um, thank God this is it. Thank you, God. And thank you to all of you, all of you really. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just want to thank all of my therapists, uh, Jessica, Dana, Lauren, Maria. There's a lot more. I just, I'm forgetting their names right now. I'd just like to thank the boys, you know, shout out Jonathan, shout out Ethan, shout out Christian, shout out Connor, shout out PJ, you know, shout out Steven, shout out all the boys. And I just want to thank everyone who's been here to help me. And yeah.
Thank you, guys. At this time, we'd like to open it up for questions. Well, I didn't really feel anything, <laughs> but like when I just, so I was hit in the back and I like stood up and I just fell straight back and lost all the feeling. So I was just like, crap, like I'm, I'm done. Like this is it. And I was just, I went into shock. So I was just kind of making jokes the whole time. But in the back of my mind, I'm still just like thinking like, I'm, I'm this is it, I'm, I'm paralyzed. Like I can't move, I'm, I'm done. Were you scared? <laughs> Kind of, but I just also accepted it after the first five minutes. I'm like, okay, like this is it. Um, what what am I gonna do about it? Like I can't can't really change the fact that this happened. So I just have to get past it and just move on with my life. Especially being 16 years old. I mean, for something to happen at that age, I'm sure going on through your mind, well, can I, will I still be able to play sports? Will I be able to continue to live a regular life? Was any of that going on through your mind? Yeah, you asked immediately if you could, if you were going to be able to go back to play this season. Yeah. <laughs> Though, like, that, when I found out I could, like, move again, I, the, like, one of the first questions is, am I going to be able to play again? And am I going to just, am I going to walk again? All these just, like, simple things. But they're big to me now, so just you really can't take anything for granted anymore, especially after this. Would you say that there's a lesson for your teammates to learn, and I mean for all of us to learn, being that we take advantage of being able to do simple things like walking and moving our hands? Yeah, you like, especially me, you really do take everything that you do for granted, especially just simple things like brushing your teeth or eating food. Like just picking things up and just being able to walk and run, all these things are like, okay, I can do it, yeah. But once this happens, you're like, how am I going to be able to do it again? So it really does change your mind on the subject. Mom, can you take us back? Because I know today, I'm sure, isn't the first time that you saw him walk. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> but can you take us back to the moment? Um, well, first of all, for you, what it was like. I know you kind of described a little bit about Dear God, let this be our new normal, but then also to see him take his first steps. Well, I videoed it. <laughs> I videoed every moment of this. Um, actually, I was like, no, don't, he's going to fall. <laughs> Sit down. But um, his therapists were really awesome in allowing him to do whatever he wanted to do, even when it didn't feel all that safe to me. Um, they clearly know better than I do. I didn't want him to leave ICU yet. I didn't, I didn't want him to do any of the things he was doing yet because I was terrified he was going to fall. And um, they just said, if he's ready, let him do it. And he didn't fall. <laughs> so, yeah. I never did until a few minutes ago. They never really, they always were very encouraging. They always said, he's 16 years old. Um, it, the brain is very powerful. And so nobody told me that. And I'm grateful for that. Very grateful for that. I don't know if we can have one of the doctors jump in about just um, the nature of how, how the surgery went. Because he didn't sever his spinal cord, obviously. That, that why he's able to do what he's doing now. Uh, Sure. <laughs> so there are different types of spinal cord injury, and it really depends a lot on the mechanism, whether it's someone who has suffered a gunshot wound to a spinal cord is a lot different than a blunt injury. And the kinds of injuries that we see run the spectrum. There are clearly injuries where there is no hope that people are going to really improve. And then there are injuries where there's some hope. and. Chase had the kind of injury where there was significant bruising and compression of his spinal cord, and that was the kind of injury where we're optimistic that with, with everything um, that we can provide from a surgical standpoint, from an ICU standpoint, from a therapy and rehab standpoint, 
that will be able to gain function and improve. It's very, uh, uh, I think it's, it's a very difficult thing for us to use a crystal ball to predict how people will do, but I can say that when you're presented with a patient like Chase, who's prime of life, a jock, and the kind of attitude that won't limit him from trying new things and moving forward despite what you tell him, then it's the best possible outcome because uh, the kind of attitude that you need to get through the last three weeks in rehab is one that he has. And the injuries that we see, some people become very uh, depressed about them. Some people will not have the sort of um, enthusiastic, motivated approach that Chase did. And Chase, with all of the support that he had in the, you know, in the hospital and the rehab program, um, really made the most of his ability to recover. And I, you know, I, we always worry about young teenagers uh, who are in devastating traumas. Uh, we worry about them recovering initially, and we worry about the trauma that has long-lasting effects, the emotional toil that it, that it causes on not just the patient, but on the family's life. And with the right support and with the right patient, you see what can happen. And um, it's really, you know, it's a reminder to all of us that we have to be optimistic about every patient's recovery. We have to look at um, each patient and individualize their care and remind ourselves that, that we don't know everything and that using a crystal ball to make predictions is a really, you know, not really a science. And so with the, with the ability that um, I guess 21st century medicine has to give every person the best possible outcome, uh, these are the kinds of results that we can see. Did you expect to see a recovery of this, uh, for him to get this far and to, to be walking like he does? Uh, I would say that when I saw him in the trauma bay on the initial night, when they flew him over, uh, when he got off the helicopter, when I met his sister, uh, when we were initially talking about how limited his function was, I was very worried about whether he would be able to walk. We were very worried about what sort of life he would have in terms of independent living. But having said that, I think we've also learned as physicians and providers in the medical community that we don't know and we can't make predictions about how people are going to do. That we're surprised on a daily basis about just how well um, and how people exceed our expectations. Uh, and it's. Uh, uh, it's a humbling uh, sort of experience to see someone like Chase defy our normal expectations. <laughs> from, uh, from the rehabilitation point of view, one of the things that uh, we uh, would look at this kind of uh, injuries, like Dr. Rosenthal mentioned, uh, is there sensations, there's movement. So uh, immediately after he had the surgery, well, the other advantage is to start the rehabilitation process. So here we have the advantage that it's just moving from one floor to the other. As I say before, he started the process five days later. Uh, my partner, Dr. Quinones, when he evaluated him and admitted him initially, uh, we were optimistic to have some recovery because we saw that there was some sensation and some movement. Uh, with the type of injury that he had, which is an incomplete spinal cord injury, uh, and the type of movement that he had, there was about 60, 70 percent chance that we will see ability to stand and walk at least at the community level, short distances. Uh, what he really has surprised us was that he has already been there a lot sooner. So that, that works uh, to his advantage. There's still a road to go. We still need to work some strengthening, some balance, some coordination but that will be uh, uh, much easier with, uh, with the recovery. And the other thing, as I uh, mentioned before, is uh, he's young, he's uh, athletic, so his mind was set, I think, from the beginning that I need to work hard in order to do things, and the involvement of the family always there at the bedside, that makes a big difference when we work with patients in the rehabilitation world. Chase, how do you feel? What's it like being able to walk through, what, how, what was your feeling when you took your first steps? Um, 
it was kind of scary because I still didn't have full movement in any parts of my body. But I, I was on the walker and I was like walking forward and it was hard to like move my leg forward to get a step. So it was, it actually did, like I didn't, I can't, I, I don't really feel like that much pain like anywhere below my neck. Like it will hurt, but it won't, it won't hurt as much as it did. But when I took those steps, it, my legs were like aching. And I just remember thinking like, I'm doing it. Like I, like the pain will go away. Like I'm, I'm walking at least. You never doubted that you would walk again? I definitely did. I definitely did doubt that I would walk again, but I just, I, I pushed myself to walk. So I didn't doubt that, I did doubt that I would walk, but I didn't doubt that I could push myself to be able to make progress. So. What's it like seeing all of your teammates and everybody here? Um, oh, it's so scary. <laughs> I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> And how long was the recovery complete from the time he had his injury to the to this recovery process? I mean, I know he's still in recovery, right? But how long has it been till we get to what we see now? How long what? How the, long has it been since he had his injury to what, what we're so seeing now? So the injury was about uh, three weeks ago. So March 2nd, he came to us, we have on March 7th, and we're here today, so just two weeks and a half. So, um, Chase, would you mind taking one more step? And in tradition, um, our Jody Module Children's Hospital team always has a special discharge song for its patients. And it's a huge tradition. And it's going to be led by the therapist team. And so, um, in support of, uh, of your teams, too. How about that? Take a quick stop. Quick walk. All right, let me get that.